part of the motivation for this course um, is the massive progress that has happened in human cognitive neuroscience over the last 25 years. So I just want to give you a depiction of that. Um, and so this is roughly what we knew about the organization of the human brain circa 1990. It's my schematic diagram. The black ovals are primary cortical regions for um, basic vision and motor control and stuff like that. There were very big, blurry, not well understood patches. It was known that something back here was involved in face recognition from studying patients with focal brain damage. Um, similarly, we knew that some kind of patches like that were involved in language and something up here involved in attention. Uh, but that was kind of it circa 1990 because rarely do patients with brain damage have one little tiny lesion and just one very specific deficit. Every once in a while that happens and it's vastly informative. But most of the time it's a big blurry mess and it's kind of hard to infer. So that's where we were not that long ago. And then functional imaging came on the scene. And this is what we know now. So this is again my very idiosyncratic, um, um, very schematic diagram. Uh, of what we know about the functional organization of the human brain. And we'll say more throughout this whole course about what this means. But very briefly, um, I, we now, there are dozens of regions of the cortex in the human brain for which we now have a pretty good idea what the function of that region is. That wasn't true 25 years ago, and it's true now. Um, it's new and important. Um, the cr cr critical thing here is not where each of those dots is. I'm a psychologist, and frankly, I couldn't care less where the dots are, other than that you need to find them to study them and stuff like that. Uh, to me, what's interesting is not where they are, but what they are. What aspects of the human mind are allocated to specific brain structures, and why those functions and not others? That's a question I can't answer, but I think it's really fascinating. Yeah? Um, but in any case, whatever the answer to that, the inference is that the mental functions that have their own private patch of brain are, in essence, fundamental components of mind, OK? Um, this is just the barest beginning of what we'll do in this field. I'll just talk, because I won't have time to go through the slides. So as I mentioned, this is great, but it's like step zero, kind of. It's, like, it's really a sketch of a research program. Um, what we want to do from here is first refine exactly what is represented and what is computed in each of those regions. What really do they do in some more precise mode than just saying places, color, faces. I mean, that's nice, but what does that mean exactly? So we want to really refine what exactly that means. And that means characterizing representations and computations as precisely as we can. That's a tall order. I think there's some progress in these regions, but much remains to be done. But even that um, is just identifying the functions of the parts. Beyond that, ultimately, we want to know how these things develop, how they evolve, how they're connected to each other physically, how they interact when we act in the world. All of those things are going to be necessary for really understanding how this thing works. And those are the things where um, our field is not doing quite as well. OK, this is what I just said, blah, blah, blah. OK. Um, I'm just going to try to remind myself if there's any other key thing. I don't think so. Oh, right, a few other cool questions we're going to ask along the way. What, if anything, is special about the human brain? maybe, not shared with other primates? I love that question. I don't think they're crisp answers yet, but there's a lot of interesting thinking about it. Uh, where does no knowledge come from? This is in the background of all of the stuff that we're studying here. How much is genetic? How much do we learn? Can we think without language? That feels like one of those things probably every one of you has thought about that, some version of that question at some point. And now, actually, there are really good empirical answers that will actually answer that question, I think. Maybe that's going a little far out on a limb, but. I think there's a pretty strong answer to that question um, that comes from cognitive neuroscience. This one, too. Can we perceive things when we're not aware of them? Can we even understand them? Can we decide about them? Can all, which of those things, if any, can go on outside of awareness? So lots of cool questions come up here. And lots of really important things that probably should have been in this course aren't. 